Welcome back everybody, Zaza Rides here. Today we're gonna go over some of the mods I've made to my bike, some of the upgrades. I hate that word mods, but you know, it's what people use. Anyways, we're gonna go over some of the upgrades I've done to the bike. Uh, now that I've finished doing the most major mod, which is the upgrade, which is the 1250 kit. We're just up here taking a little chill by ourselves. Somebody asked me about prices, so I think I'm gonna throw the prices in there too. Let's start with the front end. So I don't know if you'd consider this a mod, but my tires, they're uh, Michelin Commander 3s. Uh, we did that front and rear. Yeah, I've gotten about 10,000 miles out of them so far. Very good tires. They still got plenty of tread in them. Not bad. They're good for water as well, apparently. Moving on, we did the front suspension. As you can see, there is a plus two in there. So we did the plus two damper rods. We did the gold valve emulators and race tech springs. Guess next we could do my headlight. This is an 05 Dyna headlight. It's a little better than the one I had. I still need to put an LED bulb in there. It could be a lot brighter. That was free. That came from uh, my buddy Johnny. Next we have my Memphis Shades gauntlet fairing. You can see, I'll show you the back side of it too. That's what it looks like from behind the bars. This one I picked up for a deal. I think it was from a Harley dealership. I paid like 75 bucks total for that, including all the mounting hardware. It's fit for my bike. Works great. Blocks a lot of the wind off your chest. 75 bucks, Facebook Marketplace. I guess next we'd move on to my whole front setup here. The bars here are a, uh, they are eight inch mini apes. They are off of a 2020 iron. I bought those from a friend of mine. Well, he's now a friend after we bought them. Uh, those were only 40 bucks. I think that might've been tonic, 40 bucks for those. We have my small, I think it's one and a half inch risers. Got those at the swap meet. All this stuff is secondhand. These were about, I think 10 bucks. My speedometer bucket and clamp, that was like 20 bucks. So I had some mirrors that I bought at the same time. I only paid 10 bucks for them, but I needed the longer stem at the time. Speaking of which, these ones are drag specialty mirrors, just the short stem. They're pretty darn good. Those put me back about 65 bucks. Uh, I just bit the bullet and got those. Speaking of drag specialties, we got the drag specialty. You know, I don't know, remember what these are called. They're really nice levers. They help with the pull. I don't know if it's a more dramatic angle, but it does help with the pull. I hated the ball on the end of the stock levers, so I got something without that. They're real thin and bring them real close to your hand. They are indented on the inside, so you can do two finger pulls pretty easily on uh, brake and clutch. Pretty nice. I like them. Next, we got the uh, Vans Colt Grips. The Vans Colt Grips are only about 20 bucks. Not very expensive. Uh, they're pretty nice though. Real grippy, not too fat. I'm happy with them. And then of course, because I did the bar raise and have all this stuff in there, I had to get uh, the cable extension kit from Burley. That Burley extension kit was, I wanna say 150. Uh, not bad, but uh, necessary for this one. Uh, they could go a little longer, although the brake cable is pretty much stretched to its max. If you can see it there, the brake line, not cable. I actually had to turn it out sideways there so it would get the right routing. Rubs against the fender a little bit, but no harm done. I recently picked up a new gas cap. This is just a Harley gas cap. It's not flush or anything, as you can see. It was uh, 35 bucks. I had to pick that up though, because uh, mid-ride I noticed I didn't have a gas cap in. I don't know if it popped off on the freeway, or honestly, when I was fueling, I probably just put it on the carb right here, and then it fell off in the parking lot. <laughs> I only noticed like 25 miles into the ride though. Luckily I was within five minutes of a dealership, so I just picked that up. So we'll just start with the controls in general. I did uh, mid controls. I swat, swapped from the fronts. Uh, these are actually my front pegs. I just removed the controls, put them back on, so I use them as highway pegs. They are a bit ugly, but they do the job. The whole thing's ugly and does the job, but <laughs> the mid controls were only uh, 100 bucks. Yeah, I think I also got those off of Facebook Marketplace. Only 100 bucks for all the controls for the front. So I painted these black, you can see in one of my videos. It's just a real cheap paint job because these ones actually have a crack in it. I don't know if you can see it right there. There's a crack, so I just painted them myself. They're probably not gonna stay on there forever. <laughs> Maybe once I lose my shifter, I'll buy a new one. Speaking of shifters, I got the uh, Tracker Die double skate wheel shifter peg. Uh, this is actually my second one. My first one I didn't tie it on, tighten on enough and I kicked it off on the freeway on my way home one day. Uh, this one has been on longer than the first one though and it's still tight and it spins a little bit. 
but I do have lock washers in there so they don't spin freely. You can leave the lock washers out so they do spin freely, so that's pretty cool. And again, that's track or die. I think this kit is only about 20 bucks, maybe 30, maybe like 29.99, you know. Not bad. Next I got my Amazon Moto pegs. I think these were only about 50 bucks. Pretty good price. They've done a really good job. There's no sign of damage or tear or wear and tear or uh, none of these are coming out. I checked the tightness on all these little guys and they're good. I just couldn't bring myself to pay like 150, 200 bucks for a pair of moto pegs. For the rear, I actually have the same for the passenger. They're the same style. I don't know if they're the same company, but they're the same style. And uh, these ones were about 75 bucks. Great for my passenger. Gives her the uh, stick she needs, keeps her back. Awesome stuff. I also have the No Bad Days Derby cover. That's from Track or Die as well. Sent me back about 150 bucks. And if you'll see a pattern, I'm just trying to add more black, going through everything that was chrome, just putting it uh, black instead. And uh, yeah, I'm liking it so far. Yeah, I didn't pay for anything here, but I painted my battery box there. That was when I painted the mid controls as well. I painted the battery box. Had to mash it into shape a little bit, but it works. And here's the controls on the other side. Brake lever with the moto peg, with passenger moto peg. Moving on, I got a uh, Saddleman Explorer seat. Saddleman Explorer seat sent me about, I think it was 375. Uh, it is a fantastic seat, I gotta say. It's a bit big for uh, the look I want for the bike, the style I want for the bike, but I do so much riding with my passenger. It kicks ass for that. Uh, she loves the rear seat. If you can see the side profile, it is a thick seat comparatively on the bike there. Very thick seat. Huge lumbar support, which I actually really like right now, especially after I upgraded the engine. Really holds me in when I get on it. Comes with rider gel all right here. I uh, hope the light's not ruining it. It's rider gel all right here in the back and in the passenger seat. Uh, it makes for a really comfortable ride. You'll feel these little bumps, but it'll just absorb them. Uh, it doesn't send it all to your spine, which is great. Uh, so it is a more stiff seat. It's um, it's softer now that I've put more than a thousand miles on it. The braking on it is definitely done, but it is still a pretty stiff seat. It gives you a nice solid base though. I really like this seat. Moving back, we have kind of a combo here. I took off the uh, tail lights there originally when I put on my sissy bar. The sissy bar here was custom made by a guy in uh, Whittier. Uh, I'll put his Instagram up here. It is a scooter punk sissy bar. Uh, powder coated and custom made and everything. Uh, I had him put on the luggage rack on the back and I have actually noticed since then he started making uh, detachable sissy racks that have like a holding bar here so you can just slide them off. So I won't, I take partial credit for that but you know not really. But I love that little uh, rack there because uh, when I got a passenger I can't put my bag here so I put it back there. That was 150 bucks after powder coat for custom sissy bar. I know a lot of people go with this Edward Ritchie guy on uh, Etsy but you know. I didn't feel like paying that much. And I got to choose exactly what I wanted. Love it. Then we got some bags here. These are original Sportster bags from, I think it was around my year in the two, early 2000s. Uh, these were actually in a pallet that my brother bought um, at an auction. And I just got really lucky. It didn't have all the mounting hardware, but it did have the brackets. I had to go down to the hardware store and make a little bit of the mounting hardware myself because I didn't want to pay like 70 bucks just for some rubber pieces to stick in the bags. I think all the mounting hardware for this would be uh, over $100 from Harley. And for the uh, total on those, uh, he bought the whole pallet for 45 bucks. So I just bought, <laughs> I just paid him for the whole pallet. He wanted to give them to me for free because, I mean, what are the odds that he just found these and they're exactly for my bike? So I, uh, I just paid him for the cost of the whole uh, pallet, 45, 50 bucks. And yeah, got a deal on those. Next back here, we got the Moon's tail light. It has integrated turn signals that'll turn on and blink. So uh, I don't know if you could see right here, there's an arrow and right here, there's an arrow. And then you got your brake light in the back. 
plate illuminator up there. This one was a hundred bucks, not bad. I didn't buy the uh, like black lip there. I kept the chrome. The replacement for that is like 50, 60 bucks. One thing I forgot to mention, uh, my signals. These are drag specialty handlebar markers. And these flashers were, I think, 75 bucks drag specialties. I guess I could show you the rear as well. So you can see the turn signal and the moon's MC light. Put it in shadow, there you go. They blink pretty fast because uh, I had incandescence, of course, because this is a 2003. Did I even mention that? This is a 2003, originally 883 Sportster, the heart, the uh, anniversary edition. With the uh, LED turn signals, uh, I did put flasher relays under the seat. I made a video on that. It's been working great ever since. Uh, I, you can change the uh, speed in them, so I pumped up the speed, make it flash a little quicker. Got a lay down license plate. It has a curve on it. There's no lip around the outside like you see on most of them. But this one was only um, 30, 40 bucks maybe off of, uh, I believe, Amazon or eBay. Not sure where I got it. And then you can't see them right now. But in there, for the rear suspension, I've got, uh, it's actually touring suspension because I do a lot of two up and I need that suspension. And uh, I actually got those off Facebook Marketplace as well. Used, uh, they were, I think, 220 for both. It's the one where it has a big adjustable shock on one side and a smaller shock on the right. Those have been really nice. Uh, makes it stiff for canyon riding when I'm by myself uh, and handles having a passenger great. Haven't bottomed out. Of course I won't because it's touring suspension on a Sportster. And uh, I leave it at like the first click on those. No preload on them at all. Moving on to the main piece here. We did the Hammer Performance 1250 upgrade. So you can see the jugs. A little more silver here than the heads. I got the billet aluminum uh, pushrod bases down here. So I actually didn't do any head work on this. I didn't do any cam work. Um, if you saw my video, the cams did come out, but it's because we didn't uh, unscrew it from the inspection plate, or not the inspection plate, the uh, ignition cover. We didn't take all that and unbolt it from there first. I don't know if you're supposed to, I don't know. We just kind of winged it, but it all worked out great. We did a Dynatech ignition in this side though. We put in a new clutch on the other side. I think it's Alpha 1 maybe. I'm not sure, I'll, I'll put it in here. That clutch is actually gone because I messed up putting it in. I put it in too tight and I burned through that clutch in about 600, 700 miles. So I had to take it over to my guys at Tracker Die and they dropped in a new clutch for me. Uh, same kind of thing, it's an extra plate kit, a 15 pound spring, and they got rid of that grenade ring as well. The whole hammer kit cost me $1,400. That includes all the gaskets, that included my ignition, that included the clutch, uh, the new clutch. So a pretty good price. I wanted to see what it could do without any head work, without any cams, with not beefing it up like crazy. I wanted to see how much power just the base kit could get when you do the ignition properly and when you get a clutch that can properly get it to the wheel. I left the stock air box in there. Uh, I got a K&N filter, it came on the bike, but it is the stock air box and the stock exhaust. We pulled the baffles out. Uh, sounds great now, but I do get a little decel pop. I think I need to take my mixture screw up a little bit. It's all the way out right now. Speaking of which, on the carb, uh, the carb had a thunderslide uh, kit put in there. I think it's called a thunderslide kit. I do not know the price of those because it was already in there. It's got the uh, jets that came with the kit, so a little bigger jets. All right, so I think that's about it. Hoping I didn't miss anything. You can add up the total if you want to see how much I spent on it. Uh, it's probably more than I paid for the bike. I'm pretty sure it is, but I don't regret it. I like working on the bike. It's been a good time. It's treated me well and it's running great. It's ran great the whole time. I think I'm in about 23,000 miles now. Very good bike. So comment below, what mods have you done to your bike? What mods do you want to see me do? What do you think I'm gonna do next? If you have any more questions about it, post them down there and I'll get back to you. But that is gonna do it for this one. Thanks for coming to check out Georgia here. My was 883 anniversary edition Sportster. Great bike, recommend them, love them. They're awesome. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you guys in the next video. And until then, y'all ride safe now you're here.